Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the ending of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep was really sad when Xehanort took over Terra's body while his mind remained in his armor. Ventus's heart went resting inside Sora after defeating Vanitas, and Aqua fell into the realm of darkness after fighting Terra Xehanort in Radiant Garden. However, there was something I forgot to tell you guys about when I blogged Birth by Sleep. You see, there is a secret episode that can be unlocked depending upon the difficulty mode the player has chosen for each character's story. Either by completing the sticker album, obtaining the Key Slinger trophy, or just complete the final episode. In the secret episode, it shows Aqua in the Realm of Darkness fighting several pureblood heartless, including a dark hide, while wielding Ericus's keyblade, the Master's Defender. And we also know that sometime later, Aqua met a cloaked Ansem the Wise. But just recently, Square Enix gave us a new game that goes more in depth with Aqua's time in the Realm of Darkness. And it is the subject of my blog today. So, released for the PS4 in Japan on January 12th and in North America on January 24th, 2017, the game is Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage. Now, let's begin with the story of the game. At the Mysterious Tower, Yen Sid tells Riku, Kairi, and King Mickey that they must rescue Terra, Ventus, and Aqua. Mickey reveals that he last saw Aqua in the Realm of Darkness. The story begins where Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix's secret episode ended, with Aqua discovering the Castle of Dreams within the Realm of Darkness. Aqua learns that time does not flow in the Realm of Darkness, while exploring the remnants of the Castle of Dreams. In the remains of the Dwarf Woodlands, she defeats the Phantom Aqua, a ghostly copy of herself. Later on, Aqua chases, well, illusion versions of Terra and Ventus through the ruins of the Enchanted Dominion, and she learns that Xehanort is trying to find the Chamber of Waking where Ventus is sleeping, as she is pulled deeper into the darkness. Aqua is then found by King Mickey, and the two Keyblade Masters team up together to help Sora and Riku close the door to darkness so they can save the world from the Heartless. When the Demon Tide attempts to attack Riku, Aqua sacrifices herself to keep it at bay. Plunging even further into the darkness, Aqua vows to help anyone else she encounters there. She watches as the worlds are restored, and finds Ansem the Wise at the dark margin. Having learned the role he unknowingly played in sealing Aqua's fate, Riku demands to know why King Mickey kept it a secret. Yensen explains this was done to prevent Sora from attempting to rescue Aqua, and he reveals a safe means of entering the Realm of Darkness has been found. Riku and Mickey receive new garments made by the Three Good Fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, and they depart to find Aqua and return her to the Realm of Light. Meanwhile, Kairi is instructed to train under the wizard Merlin so she can become a Keyblade wielder. A short time later, Donald and Goofy reunite with Sora, who returns to the Mysterious Tower after a prolonged absence. Sora is tasked with learning to retrieve lost hearts by Yan Sid, and he is told that almost becoming Master Xehanort's vessel has stripped him of many powers. Yan Sid reminds Sora of Hercules, who once lost and regained his godlike strength, and the Keyblade wielder departs with Donald and Goofy to pay the hero a visit. Aboard the gummy ship, Sora and friends wonder how they will travel to other worlds, as the lanes between them have been resealed. Suddenly, Goofy remembers an old saying of Yen Sid's, May your heart be your guiding key. Using his heart, 
Sora successfully opens a path to Olympus Coliseum. So, what are my thoughts on this game? Well, to me, this game was very epic, and I like to call it the Rogue One of Kingdom Hearts. But before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to the gameplay. When the player assumes control of Aqua, she starts off at level 50 instead of level 1. She can also use her movement abilities like high jump, air slide, and double flight. Also, shot locks return from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, as does the focus gauge. Aqua can cast Faraga, Blazaga, Thundaga, and Kuraga. Each of these spells consumes MP. Speaking of which, the MP gauge returns and functions as it did in Kingdom Hearts 2. But, picking up MP balls now shortens MP recharge time. What's more, magic affects the surrounding environment. Command styles like Spellweaver return as a type of situation command. The other situation commands are Faraga, Blazaga, Thundaga, and Wayfinder. Flow Motion returns from Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. However, Aqua can only use Rail Slide. You know, that almost reminds me of the Jungle Slider minigame from the first game. The player can customize Aqua's appearance by using accessories and palette swaps unlocked through the completion of various objectives. Also, King Mickey serves as a party member while Aqua is in the depths of darkness. Once it is unlocked, teleportation allows Aqua to revisit locations through the use of save points. And lastly, Aqua's Keyblade disappears when it has not been used for a while. Now, let's talk about the worlds in this game. Now, like Chain of Memories and Coded, this game mainly takes place in one world. In this game, the world is called the Realm of Darkness, or Dark World. To me, it's pretty similar to the end of the world from the first game, because it shows what's left of worlds that were taken by the Heartless. There's the Valley of the Dark, which is a twisted and decaying forest drenched in darkness where you learn your tutorials. Past the valley is the Castle Town, which is all the remains of the Castle of Dreams from Cinderella where Aqua has to restore the road by striking clock gears. Beyond that is the remains of the Seven Dwarfs' cottage from the Dwarf Woodlands from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and a magic mirror leading to the world within, which resembles both the realm of the Spirit of the Magic Mirror, the Dwarfs' mines, and the Queen's castle and dungeons. Past the mirror is the Forest of Thorns, a corruption of the dark forest of Enchanted Dominion from Sleeping Beauty. Beyond there is the depths of darkness, which is like a dark cavern. At the end of the cavern is an opening with bright light that takes you to the final battle at the remains of Destiny Islands. However, only the Keyblade Graveyard and the Mysterious Tower are seen in cutscenes. Now, what do I have to say about the graphics? Hmm. Well, like Kingdom Hearts Key back cover, the graphics are flawless. They look very realistic, and I know that the future Kingdom Hearts 3 will have graphics like this. Now, here's where we come to the enemies. As we all know, in the secret episode of Birth by Sleep, Aqua had to fight many pureblood heartless, like Shadows, Dark Balls, Neo Shadows, and a Dark Hide. However, 
The Heartless you fight in this game are the Shadows and the Neo Shadows. Including a few dark sides. Also, there are four new Heartless in this game. They are Flutter Rings, Flame Cores, Water Cores, and Earth Cores. Lastly, the bosses you face in this game are the Demon Tower, the Phantom Aqua, and the Demon Tide, which I call the toughest final boss in Kingdom Hearts history. Yes, it's true. I had a very hard time beating this beast on my first playthrough, and it only took me four tries to beat it. Luckily, I had some great advice from a Boss Buster video on YouTube. And I want to thank the creator of that video for helping me out, and many other players as well. Now, there are several moments in this game that I found very memorable. For example, since time does not flow in the realm of darkness, it seems that Aqua hasn't aged while being trapped there for a decade. Pretty similar to Princess Elena not aging while she was trapped in Sophia's amulet. I also like the parts where Aqua reflects on memories from her adventures in Birth by Sleep. Sometimes... As I play this game, I can feel the hurt that Aqua has been through. Also, in my opinion, the ending of this game connects well with the ending of the first game. Also, in my opinion, the music can be very touching, mysterious, and epic at times. However, there are a few downsides about this game. For example, the game feels pretty short when you compare it to the other Kingdom Hearts games. Also, you don't feel much vibration from your controller when an enemy attacks you. And you don't receive any new Keyblades or encounter any Disney characters while playing. Well, except Mickey. And lastly, there are no shops in this game. And since you collect a few recovery items from the treasure chests throughout the worlds, you gotta think before using them Otherwise, things will get really tough for you. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep A Fragmentary Passage is a really epic game. Despite the story being pretty short, the gameplay is great, the graphics are terrific, and the enemies are really challenging. Also, it gets me even more excited to play Kingdom Hearts 3 in the future, so that everyone, including myself, can presumably have Sora rescue Aqua from the, from the darkness, restore Ventus's heart in order to wake him up, get Terra's body and mind back together, and, with help from Riku, Kairi, and the rest of the gang, finally defeat Xehanort and his new Organization 13. As for my final rating, I give this game a 97% out of 100. Well folks, that concludes my Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Be sure to tune in again next time. Mustang Power!